Ed Hardy lives in San Francisco. Among the tattoo fraternity, he is judged as one of the world's best. Ed works by appointment only. His studio is at the back of a nondescript commercial building. No signs advertise his location. He had a childhood interest in tattooing, which was rekindled when he graduated from art school as a printmaker. Since he took up tattooing, he has always been attracted by the aesthetic possibilities of the Japanese style. When I began promoting this look, sort of right from the beginning of my career, when I was painting up large oriental things and, and trying to really study the aesthetic behind it and construct them accurately, and tell people, now look, you can do this, rather than get a whole hodgepodge of things, you know, add on a little bit of something every payday, you could sort of wait and, and do something more, more planned out and, and create a better effect. And I think it definitely, as that work got seen, then it does magnetize more people toward the possibilities of being tattooed that way, because there's a certain percentage of the populace everywhere always that will want to be tattooed and and i'm sure none of us will ever fully understand why and that's part of the, the attraction but the ones that do want to be tattooed should have that option and they should have a greater sort of visual option than just going in and picking out you know a12 the panther that was designed in 1932 you know it might still be a great image for some people but you shouldn't have to fit your sensibilities into into a set of visual aesthetics that are out of sync with with your life so um, that's what the japanese work afforded back piece on, on Mark is actually the same piece I'm wearing on my back and when Mark approached me to do it it was I'd, it was an uh, image I'd wanted to do for uh, probably 15 years and um, so was happy to have a chance to make up my own version of a very classic old tale. Most of these things seem to magnetize right in and usually correspond with a, an image that I've had in my head or, or a, a longing to do a certain theme. Uh, I often find that, you know, it might just stay with me for years and years and then someone comes along and pow, that's the time to do it. Scott brought me this uh, back piece adaptation. It was from a 12th century Chinese epic novel, The Water Margin, a scene of a man receiving these, uh, the books of knowledge or wisdom from the Empress of Heaven. Captain Colors approached me to do the Tibetan protector of deity on the rib, Mahakala, who is a, a protector of Buddhism and a particular favorite of mine. I have a Japanese counterpart of him on my own rib, so um, it was a natural. Bill Salmon's real visionary, big, huge face on his front. He thought this piece up to coincide with his the hairline, the way his, his hair grows down the front of his body, and then it evolved gradually. I'm very taken with tattoo images that are hybrid because I think the act of tattooing is, is this sort of transformation of, you know, echoing other forms of nature with your own skin. So I, I think it's particularly apt to do these fantasy things that are composed of, of several elements. The back piece on Bobby was entirely her composition. She brought me the uh, recipe, as it were, and I, I put it down. Ed sees in this work a combination of many of the elements of West Coast tattooing. The checkerboard-like geometric Pacific styles, the Sacred Heart from the East Los Angeles Chicano tattooing, and the Tiger with its crown of calligraphy for the Asian influence. Ed Hardy and Leo Zaleta publish a magazine, Tattoo Time, that aims to provide information on the world of tattooing by the people who are actually doing it. This issue has on its cover one of Ed Hardy's tattoos, which even more graphically uh, makes the Pacific connection. This is a stylized paya and wrapping around it a serpent. Now the serpent is an image still very much in use in the traditional tattooing of Japan. <laughs> In Japan, the tattooed man can only be played by an outsider. 
local tattooing is a hidden art. The Pacific port of Yokohama. It was here the Japanese tattoos were first collected by European sailors. One was later to become King George V of England. Another, Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. At the same time, Japanese subjects had been banned from being tattooed by official decree. Tattooing in Japan has always had a difficult relationship with the authorities. The ban from the 19th century was lifted after the Second World War, but tattooists still work from discrete locations. Hori Yu is a tattooist of the old style. He is one of approximately half a dozen in Japan who still use the old hand methods. Clusters of needles are tied to the end of bamboo rods. Traditionally, the only colors were black, red, and brown. Now, even the old men use Western dyes. Western machines and a new generation of tattooists. Mitsuaki Iwata also lives in Yokohama. Unlike most of the older tattooists, he is the first in his family to take up the art. He also has other business interests and collects Japanese wood prints on tattoo subjects. Tattooed are very private about their decorations. They are designed to be easily hidden by clothes. In contrast to the West, the Japanese have always created a unified one-piece tattoo. The total design has always been considered just as important as the elements it's made from. Yonno. The style of the Japanese tattoo started from about 180 years ago. Utagawa Kuniyoshi is the artist whose wood prints the style is mainly based on. In the West, tattoo are kind of memories, one point each, and that is the big difference between Japanese and European tattooing. Kuniyoshi became famous for his illustration of a popular Chinese novel of the time, The Water Margin. The heroes were tattooed and lived lives as outlaws doing good for the common people. Men began getting tattoos emulating these Robin Hoodish characters. Their anti-authoritarian values were admired by the laboring classes. Tattooing came to be seen as the mark of the rebel. As well as the underworld, various craft groups began sporting tattoos. Construction workers, palanquin carriers, fishermen, and firemen. This man is a house painter, and his father was a fireman. In the 18th century, firemen were one of the first groups to sport tattoos, and the various units in Edo, the capital city, would compete over their firefighting prowess and tattoos.
His father persuaded him to get his, and he is happy to have one, but he doesn't expect his son to get tattooed. Society has changed. Tattooist Mitsuaki Ohada's brother is a respected artist. He does all the design for Mitsuaki's tattooing. Most are adaptations of traditional images symbolizing strength, steadfastness, and fidelity, all Japanese ideals. The Ginza, Tokyo's commercial center. Using his brother's design skills and his own desire to popularize Japanese tattoos, Mitsuaki Oada is marketing a product that he hopes will help public acceptance of his art. Tattoo transfers. They're put on the body with water and can just as easily be washed off. Oh, they're marketed in department stores and novelty shops and at street stalls during festivals. As Japan picks up uh, and adapts ideas from the West, an acceptance of the single point, easily concealed tattoo could broaden the range of clients available to the tattooist. Uh, there are only a dozen or so tattoo artists, and it's estimated there's just slightly over a thousand tattooed people in Japan. Uh, They're rarely seen by the general public. See, to the average Japanese, uh, a tattoo is an antisocial act uh, and is conclusive proof that its owner is Yakuza. Traditionally, when men were locked up in a prison, their wrists were tattooed as a form of identification. When they were released, they extended the tattoo all over their body. To most people, it still conveys the image of expense, pain, and fear. The Yakuza have strong social networks and live by a strict code of etiquette. They control diverse business and underworld activities. To be tattooed is to prove a commitment and a loyalty to the group. Japan doesn't regard strong individuality as a positive characteristic. Being tattooed immediately defines one as being outside society's normal circles. Gathering with fellow tattooed men is one way to retain a group solidarity. Japanese men have many reasons for getting tattooed. Initiation and commitment to a group, as with the Yakuza. A desire to display an image which symbolizes virtues that the wearer sees in himself. Or maybe just a wish to aesthetically enhance his body. All reasons similar to those of tattooed people in the West. <laughs> Whether it is the historic tattoo forms of the South Pacific, 
one of the many styles of contemporary American tattooing, or the spectacular bodysuit of the Japanese, a tattoo shows that its wearer has made the same commitment. They have all chosen to make a permanent, visible statement of self. They have put something of their inner self on their outer skin. A tradition that goes back to the beginning of recorded history and will remain with us as long as the tools and the canvas are available.